Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on supply chain management. Uh, my name is uh, Vishwanadam. I am from uh, the Department of Computer Science and Automation uh, at the Indian Institute of Science. Uh, so today we will start with the first lecture and you will see a picture on the slide uh, that is the uh, Ford assembly line which is started in 1913, that is exactly 100 years ago. And in fact, uh, the Ford supply chain is the precursor to all the supply chain management and it has basically revolutionized the industry in the United States and also United States economy. So I think what we are going to do in this uh, uh, series of lectures is uh, to uh, learn about uh, the, the supply chain management, the globalization, outsourcing, and all the things like that. But they are uh, very important in my opinion. And uh, uh, this first lecture uh, is an introductory lecture to supply chain networks. So we'll start with the introduction to the supply chain networks. So I will give some examples so that uh, people are clear of the concepts. And also I'll talk about integrated supply chain networks, which are basically the integration of goods, movement of goods, finance and information. And I'll just, if possible, try and end with the best practices in the supply chain networks. So uh, to start with the first slide uh, as the introduction to the supply chain networks, what are supply chain networks? So if you look at uh, this one behind every product, there is a supply chain. In other words, supposing you take uh, a car or you take a cell phone or you take a, uh, uh, a PC or a laptop, behind that they, there are basically several companies working together to produce that particular product. If you take the laptop, there are, there is Intel-like thing which is making the processor. There is Lenovo kind of people who are making the, all the uh, other parts. And there's somebody who is making the hard drive and somebody else the mouse and somebody else the screen and so on. But everything is assembled and put together finally by somebody else. So even every product that you take, whether it is a food product, whether it is a, a car or, a, or a, this one, there is a supply chain. So it's very important we learn about the supply chain before uh, because uh, the product that you get, the quality, the cost and the usability are all basically influenced by the supply chain. So earlier, the network is fully owned by one company. For example, Ford in 1913, he used to own the iron uh, ores. Then he used to own the ship to carry the iron ore to the shores. Then steel plants, he used to own the um, assembly plants. All And finally, till it, the car goes to the dealer, Ford, Ford, Ford owned everything. But currently, it is the supply chain is not owned by one single uh, person, but it is a, a network of companies. But these companies need not have to be in the same country, need not have to be uh, speaking the same language, but they are all involved in the product design, manufacture and delivery to the customers. So because there, there are several companies that are involved in the manufacture of this, then there is there are some complications that occur because if you own the company and the company uh, is, has a president or the owner who can dictate the terms, but in the case of a network of companies, 
it becomes difficult, the governance of the company becomes an important aspect. Well, there are examples of networks of companies uh, producing products and delivering to the customers. They include in the auto industry, they in the pharmaceutical industry, in the aerospace, electronics, computers, food, apparel, etc. So, any product that you have, there are several a network of companies behind that particular product. So, components may be sourced from several countries, assembled in another country and distributed to the customer all over the world. So, you can see that the when you are making a product, there are several countries involved, several companies that are involved and so, a network coordination becomes very important. So, to give you an idea of what are supply chain networks, let me show you uh, a diagram which says their supplier, although I said one supplier, there could be several suppliers uh, here and from the supplier, uh, OEM means original equipment manufacturer who does the basically, uh, the, gives the design, who orders the, from the components from the suppliers, who does the assembler, but from the supplier to the OEM or original equipment manufacturer, there is what is called inbound logistics or B2B logistics, business to business logistics that is involved. And from the manufacturer to the products go to the distributor, from the distributor to the customer via the retail outlets. Now, there is a logistics that is involved because the material has to move from the manufacturer to the distributor. This can be by a truck, by rail, by air, whatever. And from finally from the distributor to the retail outlet and the customers. So, if you look at this is called the forward supply chain, which goes from the suppliers to the manufacturer to the distributor and to the customer. But supposing once the customer gets the particular product like an auto or a car or a, or a computer or something, if you require servicing, there are service centers and the customer has to take his product to the service center and the service center may require spare parts from which they get it from either the manufacturer or the suppliers and service it and return to the customer. So, basically if you look at uh, this particular diagram, it shows you the forward logistics, the service logistics in this, it is also called the reverse logistics. Let us look at some examples in this. For example, we have an industry supply chain where if you are a customer sitting at your PC, uh, looking at your website, if you want to order say a laptop and then the, you go to the website and you go to Dell or you go to Lenovo or any of the company websites and start ordering the process. Once you order, you pay the money through your credit card, then if it is available in the warehouse, then it is supplied to you immediately. Well, supposing it is not available in the warehouse, then it has to be assembled. In other words, depending on the configuration of your PC or depending on the configuration of your car, it may have to be assembled to order and it is assembled and then delivered to you. And supposing you have a bill to order, in other words, you have special considerations, then uh, you, you do not want the one that is either in the uh, warehouse or it has with the standardized parts, then the supplier has suppliers have to take your orders and they have to be assembled and delivered to you. So, this particular diagram is shows you the web ordering, it, the assemble to order as well as build to order. There are three kinds of industry supply chains that are involved today. There is also, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, agriculture supply chains, it starts with the farmer. Farmers are the suppliers of agriculture products. And this is also called plow to plate food supply chain and from whatever is produced, they are transported to the mandis 
by uh, the distribution centers by uh, the people in carrying on the on the head and this is a kind of distribution center where these things are sold to the retailers and once they are sold to the retailers and the retailers are the one the street vendors who basically supply it to you bring it to your house and supply it and you cook it so this is called the plow to plate supply chain now here you can see that the the supply chain is ad hoc and it it goes from end to end and there are no basically nobody who is orchestrating the relationship among the supply chain actors which means if a retailer wants to get something he he goes to the basically the uh, the mandi or uh, the distribution center and from there and so so basically the the actors are not connected in this whereas if you look at the previous uh, industry the supply chain network either when you are buying automobiles or when you are buying a pc or something the network the suppliers and the manufacturers and the dealers and the retailers are very well connected and even the customer can transact directly with the particular uh, with the suppliers and and so on so but here this is the the kind of uh, this is the kind of plow to play food supply chain network and this is why people say the indian agriculture food supply chain network is sort of fragmented and inefficient it's inefficient because it's not connected uh, to among all the players are not connected and there is no ordering system here so if you take a global supply chain network where uh, for example if you are, if you have take a, a pc or a car then there are these what are called the suppliers they are either in india or in china and they are what are called inbound logistics players who basically take the material from the suppliers and supply it to the manufacturers so in the manufacturing hubs it can be in china eastern europe or this one basically in the manufacturing hubs they assemble whatever they get from the suppliers and then it goes to the industry inventory hub or the dealers or the distribution centers and finally it goes to the retail so the retail is the one that is in the us most of the global supply chain networks the retail is on the either in europe or in or in usa and the tail end of the supply chain that is the suppliers are in the in asia and there is lot of uh, logistics that is involved because there is the material movement that is involved from the suppliers to the assemblers to the distribution centers and to the uh, retailers and in the global supply chain network there is lot of material movement that is involved and the logistics players called uh, the third party logistics players ups dhl and several others have a large role to play so if you look at global uh, uh, supply chains there are two kinds of uh, globalization one globalization is what is called horizontal uh for foreign direct investment fdi means foreign direct investment mnc means multinational companies so in a horizontal foreign direct investment mnc is duplicate the same activities in multiple countries in other words if they have a factory to manufacture uh, a car in japan they will just come to india and then have the same kind of factory here and that means they require the same components either imported from japan or some other place or they have to du duplicate <coughs> even the suppliers here but on the other hand what is more prevalent nowadays is what is called vertical foreign direct investment where firms are located in different stages of production in different countries in other words the the intel chip is made in malaysia and it is the Uh, the power supply is made in india and the, the monitor is made uh, in uh, thailand and all these are 
brought to the a particular country where it is all assembled and which is close to the customer and they are delivered to the customer. So, vertical FDI is basically components or or assemble uh, components are made in various countries and they are assembled in a particular country. This is the uh, regular outsourcing phenomena that happened in the vertical FDI. So, the basic difference between the two is the horizontal integration always occurs at the same stage in the supply chain. In other words, if you are manufacturing something in Japan, you will come and do the same manufacturing process, the same manufacturing this one in, in India. But on the other hand, in the vertical integration always occurs in the stages of the supply chain. What are the stages? The stages is the suppliers that is the make components, auto components or the assemblers, the assemblers they assemble things, the logistics providers they move the material from one company to another and so on. So, basically the vertical integration or vertical globalization is the one that is happening nowadays and it is much more interesting to study the various optimization and performance studies in vertical globalization. This particular slide is an important slide because it shows you what is called a multi-tier supply chain network. We have a OEM or the manufacturer and he orders, he assembles the product from several sub-assemblies 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2 n and each of these sub-assemblies uh, manufacturers require some components and they get it from tier 2 suppliers and each of the tier 2 suppliers they require components and materials they get it from tier 3 to n suppliers and finally the supply chain ends uh, with the raw material suppliers. So, the, there are several levels of uh, uh, the mm, supply chain here but usually uh, people the manufacturers worry about tire 1 suppliers thinking that tire 1 suppliers will worry about tire 2 and tire 3 and so on. But one should remember that even if tire 3 supplier was located in some place like Bangladesh or in Japan and if there is a tsunami there that affects the entire supply chain. So, this is called that is why it is important to map the multi tier supply chain where all your all your players are there. Supposing a supplier in one of the countries uh, is uh, his bank fails, so he cannot supply uh, the products because he does not have he does not have funds. So then the supply chain also gets affected. So it's important to monitor the economic, physical, and other and, and uh, other environmental factors of all your suppliers and have a map of all this, some kind of a uh, an Excel sheet where all your players which you are supplying to you are uh, and their locations and their addresses, their banks are all known to you. So here, uh, supposing uh, you are you are a manufacturer who manufacture uh, uh, dolls like a Barbie doll or something. It's very important the Barbie doll, uh, which is used by the children, they it has the um, it has the safety features. So, supposing they use the paint on the Barbie doll to show the color and the paint has lead content in it. If the lead content is more, then if the child licks the, the paint and puts uh, the, the Barbie doll in the mouth, then it could be poisonous. So, there are several accidents like this that have happened uh, in the future. So, it is important that the multi-tier supply chain is mapped well. And of course, the, in the forward direction, you have the distributors and finally the customers through the retailers. So, this is the uh, this is an important diagram for a supply chain uh, 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 supply chain uh, researchers. So, once we have uh, this uh, this kind of uh, introduction to the uh, to the supply chain networks and I have shown you several examples in the agriculture, uh, the industry, in the global 
this one. I have shown you the three examples. And I have also told you that uh, we have a multi-tier supply chain. It's not one player. It is several players which are companies. And these companies are independent players. In other words, if there is a supplier of auto components he is located in Japan and if your manufacturer is in is in India, then they has to they have to collaborate, but the man the supplier has no basically binding relationship with the uh, the manufacturer. There could be contracts and it has to be a contractual relationship and so on. So so when you are studying the suppliers and it's a kind of a social network. The supply chain network is a kind of social network, but the social network is not uh, persons. Usually Facebook and other social networks are between persons, but it is not persons here, it is organizations, independent organizations, which are globally separated and located in different countries with different cultures. So, how do you integrate such a supply chain network? And if you look at uh, the, the previous diagrams, there are three flows that happen in a supply chain network. First one is goods flow, that is the material flow. It goes from suppliers to the manufacturers, the components flow, and from the manufacturer to the distributors, the final products flow from the distributors to the uh, uh, retailers, the customized products flow, and finally to the customers. So there is the goods flow involved in the supply chain. And second one that is important uh, to note is the information flow. So we have the information flowing exchanged between all the partners, either through faxes or through internet or through telephone calls or through videos, whatever, there is an information exchange that happens among all the players in the supply chain. And the third one and the most important one is the finance because unless money is paid, nothing moves. So these finance, tra financial transactions among companies usually happens through banks or financial institutions. So let's look at how these three flows are integrated in the supply chain networks. So you have these players in the supply chain network, that is the suppliers, you have manufacturers, and you have distributors and retailers, and you have service providers. The service providers could be uh, basically logistics providers who provide for the transport, like truck owners, or it could be train, or it could be uh, ships whatever. So you have all these players and all these players are all globally distributed. They are not specially co-located. They are all at various places over the globe. And the next thing that happens is because the goods need to move from one player to the other. In other words, from suppliers to the manufacturers and manufacturers to the distributors, distributor to the retailers and also to the service providers and so on. So it it is important you have a network. And this network is called the logistics network. And the red dots that I am showing here, the red dots, these are called hubs. You know, there are places like, for example, in India, it is Bombay or Chennai, or it could be Singapore, Hong Kong, or near Notre Dame. These are all Sub, these are all uh, uh, ports uh, or supply hubs or there could be air uh, hubs or there could be train hubs. For example, India, they are building Nagpur as a, as a hub between uh, the various places. So there is a, a well-developed network with the multimodal transportation between the suppliers, manufacturers, distributors and so on. So that is the logistics network. And the next one that comes in is the information network. I mean, this is the web 2.0 that where either uh, they're all connected to the suppliers are all connected to, through uh, various means informationally connected. So basically with the supplier need to transcend an information or the manufacturer has to send an information 
either uh, the product or the financial information, he could do so immediately using this one. These are all secure transactions over the web. And finally, there is a web connectivity among the banks of this, uh, these various players. In other words, money transfer can happen and so and it is very important that uh, uh, the finance banks are connected because uh, the supplier when before he just gives um, okay to uh, ship the products to the manufacturer he needs to have a money guarantee in other words he may not have all the money at that paid to him before he ships but when the manufacturer receives the particular shipment then the supplier need to get paid now what is the assurance he gets the assurance from his bank his bank gets the assurance from the manufacturer's bank these are called letter of credits so the these kind of financial transactions and also insurance transactions have to happen in the supply chain and that happens through the financial network and so if you, once you have this network you can divide this integrated supply chain into three sub networks the first one is what we call the demand network the demand network is basically depending on the customer demand that you have the customer demand always occurs through the retailers and the retailers are going to order depending on what their requirements are from the distributors and the distributors means they have a warehouse where these particular items are stored and the second one is what we call supply network where you have the uh, the suppliers supplying to the manufacturer and this particular network depending on the manufacturer's requirement the supplier supply and the, there is logistics that is associated with it. It is called B2B logistics or business to business logistics. And the logistics that is involved in the manufacturer to distributor to retailer is called B2C logistics. And finally, the third network, which is also a very important network, which, which basically uh, connects the suppliers, retailers, manufacturers and others, it is the service providers. These could be service centers, as I said in the previous slide. In a previous slide, these can be repair centers where, or it, where the supplier supply the uh, spare parts for the repair of the particular products of the customer. So you have this this network, and then the three sub networks for this. Now this diagram is an important diagram here because it shows that. The, the connectivity the, between the various players in the uh, supply chain network. You have uh, the three kinds of players here. The one is the manufacturers, the distributors, retailers, the suppliers, and the service providers, and the uh, financial service providers, and also the IT, uh, the uh, information and communication networks and so on. So the next slide we'll see the we'll analyze this particular diagram. There are three flows. As I said, the final the the first flow is the goods flow or the material flow between all the partners. Now the logistics network provides a streamlined material flow between all the partners. It's very important that this, uh, the time that is taken to supply this is low and, and also the cost because if the time is high, that is, then the manufacturer has to need, uh, the key, has to keep what is called a safety inventory. So because of that, what do you need to do is your logistics network has to be streamlined and the lead times has to be reduced and the lead time is reduced that means the quality is high as well as the cost is low. And the second network is the communication network. As I said, it provides information integration between the companies in the supply chain network. And this information that is transmitted could be 
the order ordering process or it could be in the information regarding the status or it could be the uh, information regarding the uh, requirements and so on. So, it becomes or it can be uh, information regarding the funds flow. And finally, the financial network, it connects all the institutions providing the funds, letters of credit, insurance and so on. So, basically, these are the three sub uh, flows that happen they, and these are the three networks that facilitate the flow of uh, uh, the goods, the information and the finance in this. And there are three sub networks as I said, one is the demand sub network, it has manufacturing, distribution, retail, logistics, finance and here what there is what is called perfect delivery. Perfect delivery is what is called six sigma delivery. Six sigma is if a customer makes an order and there could be several things which can make him unhappy. First one is the pro there could be a defective product or the product could be delivered late or it could be uh, there are several other kinds of things that can happen with this uh, uh, that could be delivered to the wrong person and so on. So, what is important is the perfect delivery which is called Six Sigma that means the defect should be less than uh, 1 in million. The second one is supply chain sub network where it is a business to business network with the suppliers, manufacturers and they are what are called inbound logistics players, financial institutions, freight forwarders and so on. This is a huge uh, network that is because the material that flows between companies is you know it is an orderly flow, it is a huge flow, it has lot of financial implications in this because the, the flow has to be at the right time at the right place and it depends uh, the, the your production uh, times and the production capability depends on uh, this particular sub network. And finally, you have the service sub network which con connects consumers with suppliers and manufacturers after sales service centers and so on. So, basically the three sub networks which I have shown earlier that is the demand sub network, the supply sub network and the service network are the three features of this particular supply chain network. And if you are talking of what are called processes, business processes, there are three business processes in this and the first one is procurement. Procurement is sourcing raw materials and components from suppliers. See, it is a vendor and logistics provider selection, delivery scheduling and inventory management. These are all the uh, issues associated with procurement and procurement is an important uh, business process for any manufacturer because if you do not uh, select the right suppliers, the right logistics players and your deliveries could be delayed which means that your production gets delayed and that means your customers will be unhappy and so on. So, you have to keep a lot of inventories if your vendors and logistics providers are not good. So, the selection of the vendors and the sourcing of raw materials. Uh, it is not always the cost considerations that matter in the procurement. It is what is called total landed cost. It is the cost that taxes you pay if you are importing it. It is the logistics players that you pay. It is the coordination cost that you pay and there are several costs that are associated with the procurement and one has to be carefully select these partners. And the second one uh, business process is manufacturing. This manufacturing could be in a single location or it could be geographically distributed. It means that you have basically uh, companies like Flexatronics, they have a, a, a factory in Chennai, uh, they manufacture cell phones or they manufacture uh, various uh, other things uh, like laptops or so on, but they are all it could be on single location or it could be a multi plant. Uh, location in other words part of the product is done in one location 
and it is shipped to the other location and so on. So, this kind of thing happens in apparels. For example, the in the apparel industry, we will see uh, this particular example uh, in more detail uh, in the later lectures of this course. And uh, finally, it is the distribution and retail. Uh, in other words, um, the customer is served through the retailers and the retailers are served through distributors and distributors get their products from manufacturers. So, it consists of packaging, transportation, warehousing and sometimes uh, the manufacturer can directly ship to the retailers or it can outsource to a third party and so on. So, basically whatever happens in the supply chain, but as we saw in the multi-tier supply chain diagram, there are three processes of procurement, manufacturing, distribution and retail are the three business processes here. Now, let us look at the finance supply chain. Here, uh, what happens is they, you have uh, basically these four or five players that is the suppliers, manufacturers, retailers and distributors. The material flows from supplier through the customer. In other words, as the material flows, it value is added to the particular particular product that is the supplier to manufacturer, manufacturer to the retailer and retailer to the customer. And but what happens to the finances? So the movements of documents and goods happen in a forward direction. So there are things like demand forecasting, how much the how many how much of the products the customers want and so on. And also there is what is called just in time manufacturing where you don't want to keep any inventory. If you keep inventory, inventory costs money. So if you want to reduce the your cost, then it is necessary that you keep as much less inventory as possible. But if you don't keep inventory, then you are basically uh, uh, your production or your supply chain can be disrupted if there is any any problem let's say some are supposing some machine failures, some truck failures on the road, these kind of disruptions can uh, affect your supply chain. So some amount of inventory is needed, but too much of inventory means uh, too much of uh, too much of money inside, and also there is a lot of obsolescent costs. On the other hand, the financial supply chain goes in the reverse direction. You know, it is the supplier who puts the money first, but when does he get the money back? He gets back after three three months, but the retailer gets the sells to the customer. He gets the money first, and it moves backward retailer to manufacturer and manufacturer to the suppliers and so on. So, the cash flow forecasting becomes very, very important uh, in the financial supply chain. So, it is important to, to see that uh, the goods move, move in one direction, forward direction and the financial finance, the funds move in the backward direction. Yes. So, we have seen uh, so far that uh, uh, we have uh, the integrated supply chain. In the integrated supply chain, we have three flows, uh, the goods, the information and the finances. We have three business processes. We have three uh, sub networks and, and so on. Once we have seen all this, but how many players are there inside the supply chain? If you are looking at a, a 30,000 feet view of a supply chain looking from this, you have suppliers and how many suppliers? They are scattered all over the world and depending on that if you take uh, auto uh, manufacturers, there could be four to 5,000 suppliers and their logistics players which are business to business or business to customer uh, kind of suppliers. Business to business is large amounts of uh, goods are transferred. 
that is between suppliers and manufacturers and so on. Business to customer, it is small amount of goods are transferred because the customer orders are always uh, less in quantity compared to the factory orders. So, they are logistics players. How many logistics players? Because each supplier, when he supplies the manufacturer from his own country, he has his own logistics players. So, there are several logistics players from each country in this. There are contract manufacturers who basically supply the sub-assemblies or sometimes the final products. The original equipment manufacturers, they are the ones who supply the designs. They select the suppliers. They basically schedule the entire delivery of the particular product end to end and they are one the brand that their brand is the one that is. if there is any problem they are the ones who get the bad name. And finally there are distributors and the retailers. So I mean if you take any particular supply chain like uh, automobile or uh, even uh, uh, the uh, electronic supply chains. There are basically thousands of players, but you can group them as six dominant players in this. And these are all independent companies and they are globally distributed and they are all highly connected. Now, this connection is becomes very important. If you are sourcing, uh, if you are a manufacturer in India and if you want to source from China, how do you know about the suppliers in China, what is their quality, what are the banks, this one, what is their financial status and what is the record of this. So, that is where this networking becomes an important issue on this. So, in the next slide what we will show is the best practices in the, uh, in the supply chain network. Um, uh, so, before we get into this best practices, let us review what we have done. What we have done, we started with the definition of a supply chain network and we said supply chain network is a very important thing because behind every product or a service, there is a network. And if your product has to be good, your network has to be good. And if you want to know more about your product, you should know where it is coming from and how it is going to uh, go, is coming to you and what are the routes it is going to is it is following. And we said it is we define the integrated uh, the supply chain network and in the integrated we also analyzed the business processes, the sub networks and the flows and so on. So, this higher level view of uh, uh, the supply chain is useful uh, in the future when we are talking about global supply chain management. So, if you look at uh, the, uh, uh, the supply chain networks, what are the best practices in this? So, I will list the, some of the best practices here. The, the first one is what we call supply chain. Now, we, we said that the supply chain network is globally distributed. Supposing there is a manufacturer who assembles a particular product and the manufacturer gets various components and sub-assemblies from all over the world. Now, there are uncertainties in terms of transportation, there are uncertainties in terms of weather patterns, there are uncertainties in terms of the, uh, the political scenarios of various countries and so on. So, what people want is the certainty. If Dell says, it takes the money from a customer and it says, I want to deliver within 48 hours a laptop to the customer who is located in Bangalore, then it has to keep its promise. But if it is, if it has to do that, then it has to maintain the inventory nearer to the factory. So, at the manufacturer's site, some third party maintains inventory for the suppliers at the manufacturing site. In other words, once the manufacturer gets an order from the customer, then he is going to basically order the components from the supply hub which is located very closely to the manufacturing site. So, who maintains this inventory? Because inventory costs money. 
the suppliers. So this is called supplier owned inventory and the supply helps are very common in the electronics uh, industry as well as also in construction industry because if you are building an airport or building uh, a big uh, construction house then uh, the all the players are going to put all the building materials the uh, the cement and uh, all the electric uh, equipment and all that nearer to the place so that uh, you know no delays in the supply and also there is the reliability of the supply of the particular components and the second one is what we call modular edition. Now there are two kinds of products one are integrated products in other words the product is made as designed and made as an integrated whole. In other words if one part of the product goes then the product won't function. But on the other hand if the product is designed as component modules and each module can be uh, used as multiple products in other words so then if the product goes wrong then you can throw it out and then replace it by another product it is basically serves in repair and also if you want to if people want multiple products with the multiple uh, designs say if you want to have a hard drive from uh, uh, terabyte to gigabytes to this one then you can depending on the customer order and customer financial uh, status you can basically have the corresponding uh, hard drives. So this similar this modular adjacent of component modules that can uh, that helps uh, in the basically flexibility it gives the flexibility to serve the customers. The third one is what we call standard adjacent. So there are some parts and these parts are standardized so that they can be used in multiple products and multiple models. So standardization of processes, standardization of products is an important aspect when you are dealing, dealing with global this one. And finally there are what is called cross docking. Cross docking is, is, is it when, when but components are coming from suppliers to the manufacturer and there are several suppliers who are supplying at various from from various places in the world then they all come together at one place at one nodal point it's called transshipment a uh, place and where the goods are sorted consolidated or loaded onto the outbound trucks and this uh, transshipment hubs are for example singapore is a transshipment hub in the shipping where you can you know supposing you want to uh, the the ships come and unload their uh, containers from india from australia or from colombo and all other places and whatever is bound to europe it it is put on ships on the europe whatever is bound to uh, to us this is put on the on the ships of US, uh, us and so on so basically the transshipment facilities uh, are the ones where the goods are sorted i mean there are several transshipment ports which have become famous uh, dubai uh, uh, singapore hong kong and so on so these are called cross dockings cross docking avoids what is called inventory Otherwise, what you have to do, you have to take these products and keep them in uh, keep them in uh, in the warehouse and do uh, the uh, uh, again loading and unloading and so on. So the next one is what we call postponement. So final assembly done, adding customer specific features such as labeling and packaging for customer manuals and so on. So the final product is made after the customer order is Finally, merge and transit is components are shipped from different production units and warehouses are assembled during transit. So this is done at the airports, which is a very uh, nice way of doing. And finally, there is the collaborative planning, forecasting and replacement where the collaborative intelligence of multiple trading partners in planning and fulfillment of customer demands. 
So you have basically uh, various collaborative uh, co uh, collaborative between multiple multiple trading partners and the whole forecasting everything is done using that. So what we will do is uh, I will uh, repeat these two slides in the next class and uh, we'll take it from there. So uh, to uh, to summarize what uh, we have been doing so far is from starting from the definition of a supply chain network. We have seen examples of various kinds of supply chains like from agriculture to industry from global supply chains and so on and we have seen their importance and we have mapped the integrated supply chain and that supply chain has we have disintegrated the supply chain for this purpose of study into various business processes, various sub networks, various flows and so on. So basically that helps us for further studies and we have seen the best practices, the seven best practices in uh, the global supply chain. In the next class we will take it from there and develop uh, uh, the theory of uh, global supply chains. Thank you. Have a good day.